Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create and manipulate uh, arrays of structures in C++. So let's go ahead and get started with it. So with an array of structures, what you're essentially doing is having each element of an array become its own individual structure, right? So if you create an array of 10 structures, you're going to have 10 elements, each element, which is going to be its own structure. So you're going to end up having 10 structures. And this is useful because you can store different types of data all in the same array, right? It's kind of, you're kind of tricking C++ a little bit here because you're creating a new type essentially by creating the struct and then wrapping up inside of it all these different types of values. And then you're creating an array of the structure's type. So in that way, each element is basically getting you know, multiple values stored inside of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works and do a couple examples of this. So let's go ahead and create a structure and I'll give it a tag of, I don't know, foo. Okay. And this is just going to be a stupid little structure that we can use as an example. And we'll have, um, a string for it that we'll call name. And if we're going to do that, then we have to make sure that we include our string header file. All right. And then, uh, I'll put in a, a float. Okay. And now that I've got my structure here, I'm going to go ahead and define, I'll define an array of structures. All right. So this is our structure declaration declaration, and then we'll define this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to define this array, just like you would define any other array, right? Any array of any primitive data type, you know, you can create an array of integers, an array of doubles. Well, now we can create an array of foos because we've declared a structure named foo. So we've kind of, in essence, added a new data type here. So we're just going to do the same kind of thing, right? So if you had an array a of integers and you know, you defined it to have five elements. Okay, fine. That's what you would do. Now, if you want to have an array of five foo elements, you do the same thing. You do the exact same thing. All right. It's just now it's going to be an array of foos. Okay. And, uh, use a constant here. It's a, a good idea. Oftentimes, usually, maybe always to use a constant there. So now what we can do is we can assign um, values to each individual element. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the dot operator here. Okay. We're going to combine the ideas, right? So if I created a, a, just a plain old foo, right? I would do something like this to update the contents of the variables, right? I could do something like, you know, dog and uh, f dot f equals 3.2, something like that, right? Well, we're going to do the same thing here. It's just that since now we have an array, right? We're going to use the name of the array and the subscript for the element in which we want to update the name and the F field. So, so we're just combining ideas here. That's it. That's all we're doing. We're just using stuff you already know in a new way. So if I wanted to assign to the first element of the array, a couple values like name, I would just do a zero dot name and then give it a string, right? And then I could say a zero dot F equals 3.2. So now that first element of the array has now got a dog in its name field and 3.2 in its F field, right? So you, we can certainly do that. And then we'll display that to the screen just to prove that it works. Okay. And then we'll combine this. We'll, we'll take it a step further and use a loop with our array, right? So again, this is useful because, you know, instead of having to use multiple arrays, say, you know, an array of strings, an array of floats, uh, et cetera, to store all this information, we can just use one array. So it makes it quite a bit easier to deal with. So let's go ahead and uh, use a loop now. So we'll do something like four into i equals zero, i less than size, 
uh, I++. All right, and then I'll ask the user, see out, enter a name. A name for element, um, for element uh, one, right? I plus one. And then we'll do a little colon there. And then we'll do enter a value for F. Okay. Uh, enter a value for F for elements uh i plus one all right so we'll just do a couple little prompts here all right now we'll, we'll go ahead and test what we have so far you, you always want to when, i mean when you're writing your programs right i mean you want to write a little bit at a time write and test okay so see here we already got a little error, error here why because i forgot to do my cn statements okay so cn uh a of uh, i it would have been useful for me to have done that. And um, uh, a of i dot name, right? Because we're reading in the name. And then cn a of i dot f. Okay, let's try it one more time. Okay, see, I got that, I got that bug before I got much further into my program, right? So now that I saw something was wrong, I was able to fix it before I wrote too much more code, right? So name for the first element, how about Tom? And we'll do 3.2, Dick, 1.1, Harry, 0.75, Rick, 1.11, and Sam. 3.8 anyway so that loop looks like it's working pretty good so what we'll do now is we'll um i think i'll change the size to three so that way we don't have to type so much when we're testing um, and then i'll do something with um another loop maybe we'll print out the total of all the f values yeah we'll do something like that so um let's print or let's uh calculate the total of all the F values in the array, in the foo array, okay? Because element zero is gonna have its own F, element one's gonna have its own F, element two's gonna have its own F. And likewise, they're all gonna have their own names too. So I could do something like this. All right, and I could say, I'm just gonna add stuff up, right? So I'm gonna need an accumulator. So let's put this in here. So we'll say float sum equals zero. Don't forget to initialize your accumulators, everybody. It's a common mistake that I see students make constantly is they'll they'll leave this uh, uninitialized, right? And then wonder why they get garbage values because what's in sum? I don't know. Now I do know what's in sum, zero. So do something like this. We'll say uh, sum plus equals um, A of I. Okay, and then we can see out the total. See out the total is, and then uh, display that. Uh, and I forgot again, got to do our dot f. I'm trying to hurry here and make a short video to making these mistakes, but you can see we're fixing it as we go. All right, so um, let's go ahead and do this one more time. All right. And then uh, the name for element one, Tom, and then a value 1.1, Dick, uh, 8.75, and then Harry, how about um, 0 0.1, okay? And so then you can see there's the total of uh, all three of those values because what it did was is it just went through and it retrieved the contents of the F member of each element within our foo array. Right, and then we just add that up to our accumulator here. Um, so uh, we could do that, and then we could, of course, you know, display the average uh, just by simply dividing the average by or the sum by average by uh, the size of the array. Right. So I could say, you know, the average is is you know, do something like sum divided by three, right, or divided by size would be better. Okay. And now we'll we'll see what that looks like. Then once we're done with this, I'll show you how to use an initialization list with um, this array of structures. So uh, John, one point three five, 
brick, uh, eight point one, and then um, pi three point one four one five nine. Right. So there's your total, and then there's your average. Right. Um, so let's look at let's clean this up a little bit and look at how we can initialize an array of structures. An array of structures, right? So we'll create an array of foos, just like we did before, and we'll make it size elements long. And then uh, we'll have to define what size is. So it's gonna be three elements long. And remember that you can use initialization lists with foos or with structures, right? So I could do something like this. I could say foo f uh, equals and then put inside of here Hank and 3.1 say, right? Well, we can, you know, bring this in too, right? So we can combine this concept too. You know, we're looking at arrays, we're looking at using the dot operator. Well, now we can use it, we can create an initialization list of initialization list. So we're pulling all these different concepts in from things that we've already learned, right? So if you were gonna create an initialization list, of integers say you would do something like eight six seven right um, and you'd have three values one for each um, element of your array of your array of integers well now what we have is we've got three elements of foos and so we're going to need uh, to fill up or to initialize each one of those elements of foos so what we'll do is we'll just use an initialization list for each of the structures okay so that would mean that I could do something like this, right? That initialization list will go for the first element, the first foo element. That one will go for the second, and then this one will go for the last, okay? So let's see what that looks like. We'll put Hank in here, right? And we'll put in a value for F. So the Hank here is gonna go into the first element's name member. The 1.1 is gonna go into the first element's F member. Okay, now let's work on the second element. Okay, we'll do something like 7.9. Okay, so in the second element, the uh, 7.9 is going into its F, and then the Rick is going into that second element's name field, its name member, and then we'll do uh, Tom. Okay, likewise, the values are gonna be going into the respective fields. All right, so let's check out so we'll do something uh, like this. F for foo, I guess, and it's an A array. So then I will see out F dot name, and then the number F dot F. Okay, so we're kind of using that range-based for loop here. So we're, we're tying everything together. We got range-based for loops, we got arrays, we got structures, we got initialization lists. You know, we've got the dot operator, we've got it all. You know, we've got strings in here. You know, so everything's getting more and more uh, sophisticated. Okay, so you can see that uh, the array is actually um, filled up. Okay, and um, now that's gonna do it. Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.